Hurry up, Skylar. God. Come on. Let's go. It's great. You got your Dr. Pepper and your cookies. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tabula Rock Shots, and we've been alive for the last five seconds. Um, I'm Angela. Uh, I am your story guide for this evening, and we have ourselves four voluntary, unsuspecting uh, <laughs> victims for tonight as we play a game of Lost Memory, where nobody knows who or what they are, and you folks in the chat can maybe help tease that out. Um, so, as I said, my name's Angela, my pronouns are she, her. I am going to be running the game this evening, and we have two new and two returning players today. Good evening, players. How are you all doing today? Good she. stuff, good stuff. Um, so, uh, hello, hello in chat. I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, I am going to, uh, if you guys don't mind, uh, introducing yourselves really quick, just introducing yourselves with your name. Maybe if you're from something that people might want to check out, you can say that too. Uh, but yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll start with, uh, let's start with Arden. We'll just start at the top. Unfortunately, you're alphabetically first in the group, so. Heck. Um, Welcome, Arden. <laughs> hello. Glad to be here. Um, Skylar pulled me into the game. Um, but I'm Arden, they, them. I started recently on Twitch, um, just hit 100 followers recently, um, under the name Arden Geddon. It's a very good name, by the way. I forgot to Thanks. say that earlier. I like name playing on names. <laughs> Puns are the name of the game on this channel. Um, Skylar. Uh, Skylar, also uh, streaming Twitch, uh, and I do dumb things, and then uh, have the consequences. Like walking show away up. from camera as I'm talking, as I'm counting down. And, and, and then consequences yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> There's no consequences other than everybody knows how many cookies you have at your desk right now. Um, <laughs> uh, Rose. Hey, uh, I'm Rose. She, her. Um, I don't stream or do anything all that interesting on social media. I just like to bounce around from different D&D groups and see how much fun I can have. Well, friend of the network, we're happy to have you. <laughs> uh, Thea. I'm, I'm Thea. She, her. Um, I... I'm kind of the same. I stream sometimes very irregularly. I've got like 30 followers. Um, so this is probably the like highest profile thing I've done. Um, it, we don't, I had we, one... that's, that's number. That's awesome numbers for our nights. You're fine. Everything's good. Yeah, um, I had one like piano arrangement that got like 10,000 views out of nowhere Ooh, when all of my cool. others have like 30. Well, that is awesome. Uh, I... Kudos to anybody that can find it <laughs> and figure out that it's me. I mean, listen, the chat is our super sleuths tonight, so don't don't tempt them with a good time. Um, so in case anybody is new and has not witnessed the show before, this is a show based off of a I swear it was like a 4chan post that went around Tumblr after a while. Uh, the most early 2010s sentence I've said in a long time. Um, so, uh, it's based off the concept that the players wake up with no memory. That's selective amnesia they like to put in movies and television, where you remember, for example, that magic exists, but you don't know who you are or what job you have, or, like, the names of any of you or your family or friends. Uh, most importantly, you don't know your party members. Uh, so, what's going on is I have randomly created uh, character sheets. Some of it's random, some of it's not. Um, and those character sheets are in my browser right now. The players have not seen them. They know nothing about them. And over the course of the session, they will be trying to tease out their abilities and their knowledge and what they can do and who they are and why they're where they are and maybe how they can undo what's going on. Um, if they choose, maybe they like what's going on. Um, but so we are going to be playing uh, silly, heavy role play uh, session. And at the end of the session, I'm going to go around the table and see if anybody can guess what they were. 
uh, over the course of the game. You, as the chat, can donate to the stream if you would like, uh, tipping with our Streamlabs link. Uh, we've I have still forgotten to codify how much we're doing, but in general, we've been doing $5 or more. Um, if you tip the stream, make sure in your comment you name the player you would like to get a clue. Uh, what'll happen is that'll prompt me to prioritize that next player to get a substantive clue about something in their backstory or what their class is, things like that, that they'll be able to act on or learn more about themselves. Just help the story move forward. Um, that I think is the big gist. We've already had the players roll initiative to see who goes first in terms of introductions. Um, but before we get started, um, we, it's almost December, uh, holy crud. Um, but with that in mind, there's a couple of things that are going on with some of our really kick-ass sponsors. And I wanted to like give you guys a heads up because they're actually legitimately cool. Um, so Die Hard Dice this month is doing a holiday sale. Uh, you still have plenty of time to order anything that you want from them. Uh, their entire website is on sale. Everything on the site is, is on sale. And we have partnered with Die Hard Dice uh, recently to make our own set of dice. You can find the Nerdsmith Forge Fire set, which is a, a really pretty plastic set um, that is metal painted and then our Nerdsmith orange for the lettering. So it's really easy to read. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback about how the site or how the set looks. So I'm very excited to get a hold of some. Um, but if you use the discount link in chat or the code Nerdsmith, you get 10% off your entire purchase. So you should go check that out and go check out all the stuff that you have uh, that you I know most of you want at Die Hard Dice because we have a big dice dragon population in our uh, viewership um, or buy something for the dice dragon in your life. Uh, so that's at dieharddice.com. Um, and it is Tuesday, which means it is Treasure Tuesday on Hero Forge, uh, which means something new came out. Um, I double checked. I believe it is modern. Uh, modern weapons have been added. Some of the modern weapons have been added. Uh, there's some rifles and things, but they're also for those of you who aren't interested in modern tech things. There's a really nice backpack now. Um, it's got like fun pockets and it's very like squishy looking. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, and uh, be sure to keep an eye out on their social media because nine times out of 10, Hero Forge does something really fun for the holidays. Uh, they often do like a 25 days of Hero Forge. That's what they did last last year where they released something new every day in December. Um, so keep, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and finally, World Anvil, because it's almost December, World Ember is starting, which is their writing challenge for the month. They put a bunch of prompts out for you to use if you want to expand your fictional worlds, whether you're a novelist or a RPG runner or just somebody who likes to make fictional worlds and make encyclopedic repositories of knowledge about them. Uh, you can join World Ember. I'm going to be doing it this year because I'm prepping for the next season of Shenanigans. And if I need to be ready by like February to run a new season of a game, I should probably world build. Um, so I'm going to be spending December trying to make uh, the setting for it. So keep an eye on Discover RPG on Monday nights because uh, you guys can help me build uh, the campaign. It'll be fun. Um, so you should check them out all month long. They'll be doing a lot of fun activities. There are also prizes and there's raffles and prizes for best, uh, like best articles of different subjects. Uh, and they have some really cool sponsors every year that give some pretty impressive prizes. So if you get the bug, uh, you should, you should check it out and see what different categories you could maybe fill out your world with. Uh, so that's at World Anvil, and if you go to the link in the chat, you'll find our homebrew world of Vale uh, that will not be the thing I'm adding to. I'm going to change the chat function once I get the new uh, account, because it is actually a new setting, not our traditional homebrew setting. Um, anyway, that's all I got right now. Uh, so let's get started. Well, before we get started, let's turn off the uh, New Orleans jazz and get in the mood. We'll be right back.
fuck back. So, let's get started. It's a crisp morning. The only reason you know it's a crisp morning is because there's a little bit of sunlight coming through the front window of the shop. Skylar, you wake up a little, a little bit of a crick in your neck. Uh, and you sort of twist it around a little bit. And um, as you stretch, you feel, you feel yourself touch the bounds of a cage. You feel metal, little bars sort of domed around you. I know, Skylar, not again. Um, uh, and you sort of, you sort of pop back with your wings and you feel like you hit a cage. Just shake out. Um, I would like to note that unless you are told otherwise, you cannot speak. So, uh, other than speaking, is there anything you would like to do, Skylar? Can I feel here? With your wings, you certainly can. Um, you like, you kind of can flap them a little bit in front of your face and you have a little beak and you, you feel something sort of swipe off of your face and hit your chest. And there's a, there's like a little swinging bit of metal and glass that's on a chain that kind of is swinging past your face and you you almost knock the little top hat off your head. Reach in the hat, look, look touch, feel around in the hat, look in the hat. Yeah, you can kind of fiddle around a little bit with your feet on the perch in the cage you're in. Um, uh, there's nothing in the hat. It's just a very fine sort of suede brown top hat. Perfect fit for uh, for a uh, creature of your size. Uh, the the little the little monocle that's hanging from your uh, from your like wing, just you're not quite sure where it's tucked in, but it's tucked in securely. Um, it, it, it's still hanging, but you can, if you feel the need, you can lift it back up and uh, be through it a little bit, and it, it clears some things up. You might have mild nearsightedness, which is a real shame for a hawk. Uh, put a little monocle. And I guess, and kind of like try and see my surroundings. It says shop, and and I'm looking mm -hmm. through. All right. Uh, you are currently inside a domed silver cage that is propped up on a post. Uh, you're probably about six feet, maybe five and a half feet up uh, from the floor. And you see that you are currently in a, what you assume to be a shop. Uh, it is a lot of stonework, a lot of cold gray. Um, it's not like a super warm uh, ambiance around you. Um, there are a ton of cages and aquariums and uh, little, um, like little dens and things, uh, all around the shop, uh, and some what appear to be maybe there's books and, uh, like weird chemistry looking things. And there's, there's a lot of sort of, well, give me an arcana check. So go ahead and give me a d20. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so with a fifteen, uh, actually, let me double check something real quick. 
We might have more than that. Um, da, 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 da. yeah, you do have more than that. My apologies. Um, okay. seventeen. Um, you, uh, you see a lot of miscellaneous arcane stuff here. Stuff you would find in like a traditional, um, I hate to call it a magic shop, but yeah. Uh, you said I'm about six feet up. I, I'm guessing that I'm like on the, uh, little, little branch. Can I jump down to the, to the bottom of this, uh? Apparatus sure. Just... Uh, there's a bunch of like vellum and parchment ripped up at the bottom of your cage uh, yeah. with lots of different runes and things on it. Like it's clearly somebody just like trashed an old spell book or something and put it at the bottom of the cage. Not very okay, respectful. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to drop down, look around and do a little shid. Do a little what? Uh, a, a poop. Okay. If you will. Okay. I got you. That's fine. Um, you are welcome to do so if you desire. I mean, um, it's accurate to birds. Yeah, you successfully do that. <laughs> this is we what will I not get. Describe for... it. So no, this is what I get. This is what I get for this. I I did this to myself. It's fine. So. Yeah, you, um, you threw the pitch. All he did was hit it. I I know. I I really this this really was my fault. <laughs> uh. So yeah, you um, you successfully poop in the cage. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, let's see, Arden. I'll move on to you. You hear some flapping in um, up above from where you are nestled in a um. Well, it's it's quiet and dark and comfortable and you're kind of surrounded by uh just like feather light pressure around your body there's like this little cocoon of warm air that you've sort of nestled into and somebody's making some noise up above you rattling a cage or something and um you're very comfortable right now uh so it's up to you what you do um, I guess I will look up to see where, can I see where the noise is coming from? Sure, you, you kind of, you kind of like blink your eyes open and, uh, you have to like shake off all of this, uh, this like sawdust that is surrounding you. Um, and you can kind of inch towards the edge of a, um of like a, a small cage that you seem to be in. There's little wires and things. And you can see a, you can see a hawk in a monocle and a top hat, just like vibing up on a branch. Um, that is uh, the very fancy hawk. Okay. Um, I guess from there, I'll just, can I look at myself? Sure. Like you kind of instinctively just start kind of like fiddling with your nose a little bit with your tiny little hands and claws. Um, and you feel something touch the back of your leg and you sort of like twitch over and look over and you see for a split second, you think it's like, oh, crap, a snake, a snake. And then you realize it's, your, it's actually your tail. Um, you have this thin gray tail. Um, but as you like kind of shake out a little bit, you feel you feel that there's this like tuft of hair going up your head, maybe a little, um, a little pointy. Um, and, uh, you, uh, yeah, you just kind of glance around and uh, assess your surroundings. You're, you're in a small cage with, uh, a water dish and a, or no, it's like a bottle sticking into the, uh, into the cage. And uh, a little like that little hovel you came out of was just like a big hole made in the um, uh, in the sawdust. And there's a, a there's like a an old leather spell scroll tube that's been left in there open. A little chewed on. Okay. 
I guess I will take a little sip, sippy sip of my water, and then um, I'll just kind of explore my little cage. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, as you, uh, as you kind of search around the edges of your cage, you, um, you go to one of the sides, and it's right flush up against another cage, um, and you see. You are face to face with a much larger creature with big round eyes and like weirdly the most pleasant face you have ever seen. Not that you remember seeing many faces at all. Thea, you've been watching this little rat for the last moment or two and you see uh, you see her kind of. Kind of move around and uh, and you kind of nose up to the cage and you see uh you see this little rat with a mohawk? It's apparently wearing a vest. Um, this is already such an eclectic group. <laughs> yep. Um, can I like paw at the cage? Sure. You got these little. You got these little, almost like little raccoon-like claws, like paws. You kind of. You have full opposable hands, and you just sort of reach over to the cage. Um, you're. Uh, uh, your hat kind of slides a little bit on your head, uh, but it's very soft and squishy. Um, Arden, go ahead and give me a nature check. <laughs> That's a three. A three. Um, That's okay. We're still pretty good at nature. Um, let's see. So, I think, sorry, I was just grabbing that. Um, you have a, okay, so, so, so it's like a seven. It's not that bad. Um, it's a, they're a rodent of some kind. You're not really sure what kind of animal it is. Uh, but they're, up. you're like this big, and they're like this big, so like, at least double your size, uh, but with really soft fur that's almost in like a midnight blue, um, color. Granted, not that you know that your mohawk's purple right now, but you got kind of a funky coloration going. Um, so yeah. Thea, do you do anything when you see the, the little rat? Um, I'm... I'm gonna try to make a noise. Sure. What kind of noise do I make? Oh, God damn it. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Thea, the first God damn it of the night. Um, I imagine it's like a... Kind of noise. It's like a little rat squeak. A little, little rodent squeak. So yeah, you absolutely can make a noise. Uh, are you intending to try to get something across to the rat? No, just make a noise. Just just alerting it to your presence. Yeah. Just, okay. Well, more like a like, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm I'm not I'm not sure what's going on, but mm -hmm. I. <laughs> do you do anything, Arden, when you see when it tries to seem to interact with you? Just gonna just gonna stare for. I'm gonna take in whatever I'm looking at. Okay. So the two rodents just sort of do a stare off. One of them's like, and one of them's like, uh, <laughs> uh okay. Um, Rose, you hear squeaking, and it's like really irritating. It, it really would be great if they would just shut up. Um, as you are across the way from them, you see the bird, you see the rodents, and, uh, you are, um, uh, you're, like, crunched inside a little crate, like, an, it's a sideways crate. Uh, it's open, but, um, there's a little rattling of a chain, um, as your, uh, as your leg is attached to the the crate um 
and uh, and you just sort of sit there and and it's bright. It's not very pleasant. You're kind of squished in. Uh, you sort of reach up and your tail scratches an itch on your face. Uh, this little poker sort of comes out your face. But uh, what do you do when you hear this like irritating both both the pooping bird and these two rodents uh, squeaking shifting um... around? How far can I get towards, like, the opening of this crate? Oh, you can get, like, almost outside the crate. Like, there, the chain is hooked in to kind of the edge of the crate. Think of it more like just like a box that's on its side. Um, you're okay. on a counter. Uh, and as you go, oh. as you kind of start trying to crawl out, you, you hit the edge of the chain. You probably got about a foot of... Uh, ha. Um, of chain uh, latched to you. Uh, you can speak, Rose. Um, so feel free. And you keep it down up there? Some of us are trying to sleep. Uh, you two hear... Uh, um, you hear, like, the scrabbling of, of claws as a... Uh, as a winged red imp is staring down at you from a box. So it's a little fiendish thing with wings, very traditional looking like cathedral gargoyle, but, but small. Uh, and uh, kind of looks at you with these little yellow beady eyes. Are we in a fucking familiar shop? I don't know. Maybe. You don't know. You don't remember anything. <laughs> God. I, yeah. I told you this was a weirder episode than any of them <laughs> I've done. <laughs> uh, as a, I completely forgot, and I really shouldn't have, uh, all of the art for tonight is uh, continuing to be from Aaron Angelini, uh, who is um, uh, an amazing artist who has... Uh, who makes MPC and PC portraiture as part of her uh, her Patreon. Uh, so you can check her out. You can also buy all these sets, which I did, which gives you streaming rights. Um, and yes, I agree that the way the image literally matches the color of Rose's shirt is pretty great, actually. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, so, uh, Skylar, you, uh, you hear the imp, too, kind of groggily complaining um and you realize you don't you don't remember being in the cage before there's like this sort of impulse to sort of deal with the necessaries i guess uh but uh but after a moment you realize like you don't you don't know how you got here and you don't i mean i'm not gonna say a bird intrinsically likes being in a cage but for you, it doesn't feel right to be there. It's a little uh, metal, metal piece. Uh, like, the, the outer parts of this cage, mm -hmm. if you will, um, take a little piece of the metal, put it in my mouth, and just start shaking my head furiously. <laughs> Just start, just start yep. rattling the cage. Yep. That's yep. fair. That's very fair. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, Rose. Uh, the squeaking was irritating. That's obnoxious. Are we annoyed too? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. There's a loud, a sudden loud crashing noise. I just imagine the sound starts and just everybody goes. <laughs> There's just a sudden like shudder from everything. There's a little bit of squawking and and noise. Uh, as the rattling happens, uh, Skylar, you become aware of the sounds of clinking and gears coming from below your cage as you hear a and a as a little mechanical duck uh starts waddling underneath your cage sort of almost in a, almost like it's patrolling uh 
character that can't speak. <laughs> One more time. I, so, I, you gave me the character that's, that can't speak, and I so want to say, uh, you should say that to, come up here and say that to my face, you duck. You all, he, you all hear Skylar say that. You all hear the hawk say that. Uh, say it to my face, you duck. <laughs> and even you are a little surprised that you were able to say that. Wing over mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I just imagine like the end of the feathers, like very daintily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my. <laughs> So yeah, you all hear it. You all hear it. So yeah, the you can talk, Skylar. Just my top hat. Ah, oh. improper of a gentleman. I think it's just. I think it's just with your your like claw. You just like reach up with your foot and start adjusting the hat. Such improper language from a gentleman. Oh, I would like out, please. <laughs> Kind of looks up at you. Are you going to assist me, duck? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I await your response in kind. There's like an extra <laughs> little mechanism that specifically waddles its tail. <laughs> Well, isn't that adorable? But yeah, it's a little, it's a little key, here. it's a little like key wound duck, the size of a duck though. Very, uh, very elaborately constructed. It has very smooth motion and a lot of articulation. Um, it's very finely crafted. Uh, since the duck is not going to help, I'm going to look around my cage and look down at the. Uh, the you said it was like essentially what somebody took a spell book. Yeah, like it looks like it they ripped yeah. up a spell book and threw it at the bottom, or at least an at least some sort of arcane text. Uh huh. I, I'm just gonna walk around and l look at all the all the stuff. Just you're just like kind of like peering around, like doing a little <laughs> spin around the cage, trying to read everything. Um. Okay. Let's see. Um. You. Uh, you can read it. I was just double checking. Um, you see uh, in this kind of, ironically, it kind of looks like a language that was um, created uh, with claws. Um, and so it's like these little scratch marks on it. But you but you can read it. You do know what it says. It's um, it's a it's sort of a little it looks like a basic primer for young mages. It shows you how to do um, little like uh, little tiny tricks, like changing changing the temperature of something small, like a cup of water, kind of thing. Uh, little stuff. Um, it's like uh, um, let's see, like baby's first spell book or something. It's that kind of thing. It's more like an elementary school primer, actually. Like all just different um, applications of prestidigitation. Yeah, some of it, some of it is like very in the weeds, esoteric stuff that kind of makes your eyes roll back. Uh, but some of it is uh, practical, where it's like, this is how you move your hand. This is what you say, um, that kind of thing. Tantric 101. Mm -hmm. Anyone out? Anyone else out there uh, aware of the duck? <laughs> you all hear the duck, uh, Rose. You hear the bird talking as well. Can I say, <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh, you hear squeaking. Um, Damn it, Arden. Uh, you instinctively understand the sentiment of the uh, <laughs> of the other rodent. Um, if a rodent could cuss, uh, <laughs> you're like, yeah, they're they're upset. You you definitely you definitely understand the uh, the tone of of what uh, of what they're saying. I need a translator. <laughs> Unfortunately, the one who could translate for you right now also just squeaks. <laughs> hmm. 
See the you hear the machinery as the duck waddles past your cages. I just like to imagine it's like the like this kind of walking. The uh, yeah, it's the, the, it's the, the, the exact <laughs> wind up toy is just large. Yep, absolutely. Is he near our cages? Yeah. Kind of walks just by. All right. Um, I want to take whatever food I have, and I just want to start chucking it at him. Amazing. Uh, Can I do the same? Sure. Uh, so the, go ahead, and both of you are going to roll me a... Uh, we're going to say it's an unarmed... Or we're going to say it's a, like an improvised ranged attack. Uh, so go ahead and give me d20. 16. Oh, I'm rolling like crap. That's an 8. An 8? Uh, so that is... Ooh, that's actually not that bad, though. Um, uh, That's a 13 on your ranged attack, uh, Arden. And then Thea, what did you get? 16. A 16. That's a 17 on yours. Uh, so... um. You uh you chuck it and you hit the uh you hit the foot of the duck. Uh Arden, you chuck a piece of seed and it just goes dink right on the head of the uh uh the creature. Um you both hit it. Um and uh the duck just sort of dink. like very upset. Skylar, uh, you went muted real quick. Start over. Uh, did I get to see that? Oh, yeah, you can see the whole thing from above. You've got a. <laughs> Say it. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> Say it. Yeah. You've Finish got a bird's eye view, Skylar. <laughs> <laughs> did you just. Yeah, you didn't notice oh, that before. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, he, he's thrown I it up a few times. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, thank yes. you, Aimless what Nerd. For? Yes, what for and what have you? <laughs> oh. Hmm. Odd. I just had the weirdest sentiment of wanting to show you a finger which represents... Me. <laughs> Fuck you. That took a second. <laughs> so oh, damn. I must ponder this more. Uh -huh. This session uh -huh. is utter chaos. Start yeah. walking around the cage again. Oh, see, now I wish I'd put the cow in here. <laughs> utter chaos. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so the duck continues doing around the... Uh, um, around the shop and uh, go ahead everybody give me a perception check and I will call you so have your number in your head um, let me take a look uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Arden first you know I'm still rolling like crap with a nine uh, nine. Okay, so thirteen. That's not bad. Um, let's see. Then we've got. Let's go with Skylar. I I rolled an eight. An eight. Okay, so you got a ten. Okay. Um, Rose. That was a sixteen. A 16. Uh, that's a, uh, a 16. Um, and, uh, Thea. 15. 15. Okay. Uh, that is a 15. Um, okay. Uh, so, Yuri, I think, you're not Yuri, fuck. Uh, well, that's fine. Uh, Arden, you have, uh, you have the highest number. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it was the time. Um, oh, actually, no, someone got a 16. Rose, you got a, you got a 16? You got yeah. a 16. So, so, Rose, you have a, 
you have a better vantage point than the rodents do. And uh, and you can kind of glance around. There doesn't seem to be anybody in the shop, like no people. Um, but you do see a lot of other creatures. Um, Arden, same thing. You see uh, you see a bunch of other cages and crates at your level in the in the shop. You guys are like on the ground floor. Um, and uh, but Rose, you also see that it looks like there is a sign on the door that is turned and facing you on the inside of the shop. It says, come on in. So presumably process of elimination, the other side says closed. Uh, For a place that's closed, it sure is loud in here. Shut up! <laughs> it's better. Yeah. <laughs> you still hear the, like, clinking of... Can't do much about that. Uh, you all get this feeling, though, a little after Skylar does um, and starts hemming and hawing and squawking about it, um, that this doesn't feel like a place you want to be. Arden, you were comfortable in that like little bubble of ignorance of of being warm and, and safe, but now that you're, like, aware of being in the cage, there is this feeling like, I want to be out there. <laughs> um, It's very instinctive, very much in your gut that this doesn't feel right. And you all have that feeling. Skylar? Walking around the cage and looking at the arcane script uh, that is meant for my uh, poop, uh, I would mm -hmm. like uh, to. I, I'd like to attempt to channel something deep within. Okay. I would like to show the mechanical duck my favorite finger. Okay. Um. Are you trying to use finger of death on this duck? <laughs> Let me see. Um, Hawk Lich. <laughs> this. Uh, okay, but that would be sick, though. Uh, you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you are like. But you try really hard to think about like doing that, and mm -hmm. um. Uh, as you kind of like sort of try to have enough control over your claw on your foot to like bring one of them up. You're not even sure which one's the middle. You have like four. Mm -hmm. um, you see a spectral clawed hand sort of appear behind the duck and just grab it by the throat. And you're <laughs> as uh, um, uh, it's this like clawed skeletal hand and uh, a bunch you know of a bunch of like a bunch of like dark rust and um, uh, and sort of tarnish grows from the spot that it's holding the duck uh, and the duck wriggles free and just kind of like r rolls ass over tea kettle um, which is fun because it's probably made of the same material and um, and just kind of uh, and then I need you to give me a give me a 1d8 roll please our hawk does necromantic spell five, a five? oh no <laughs> Um, I'm just dead. <laughs> dead duck. Well, no, but you hear, and you hear like clinking and cranking, and it can't. It, it's really oh, no. twisted, oh, and no. then just kind of goes. It just like limps away and runs behind what looks to be the counter. Uh, <laughs> can I see uh on this cage? Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be a door? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, cage. there is there is a door on this cage. 
Uh, mm-hmm. There's a door, and there appears to be like a placard, a plate on f- on the bottom of the of the cage door, but it's on the outside. Uh, and mm-hmm. then there's a little latch uh, with a lock on it. I would like to walk over there, and then essentially, uh, by using my uh, mouth and claws, uh, essentially get up to uh, a part where. Uh, you said there is there like a latch on the bottom. There, uh, no, there's a plate, like a metal plate, on the front mm-hmm. of it, like almost like a like a placard that mm-hmm. would have information, but it's on the front of the cage. You can't see okay. it right now. And then there is a like little padlock on the cage a little door. Pad padlock. Yeah, it's a little padlock on the cage door. Hmm. By all my lichdom powers, I <laughs> command you, lock open. Oh my god. Um. Hmm. Channeling deep within. Okay. Uh. <laughs> let me see. Let me see if you got anything that'll help with that. <laughs> um. Give me one. I expected many things from this session. <laughs> I did not expect Lich Hawk. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Hmm. You you would make a, a very good familiar for a um uh, for a warlock or a necromantic wizard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you um. You, how, do you just want to open the lock or do you want it to break? I want to burst. <laughs> okay. I want to exude my power against this lock. Cool. Um, well, that'll do. Um, <laughs> what a fireball. Uh, no, yeah. close though. Um, you all, every piece of glass in the entire 60 feet around shatters. Uh, The crate breaks in multiple places, Rose, and uh, there is a shutter and a uh, a crack um, on uh, on your cages. Uh, I need everybody to give me a constitution save as uh, this hawk cast shatter. (laughs) Um, oh, do I have to start? It's a good start to the game. Yes, you also. No, no, actually, you don't. You don't. Okay. I need no, to actually, damage, no, I? no, you do because the point was centered on you. Uh, <sighs> so you also need to cast it. Usually, you don't cast shatter on yourself or like near yourself. <laughs> you have an ego uh, that's a, yeah, that's like a grenade spell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the spell save is a 13, so let's see how you do. I got a 12. Okay, so 12, 13, 14, you're fine. Uh, Rose, what'd you get? That was a four. So a five, okay. So not, not great. Uh, and Arden? Good old two. That's a three, um, so you didn't make that. Uh, and uh, and then Skylar? Yeah. What'd you get? F- 15. 15, 16, 17, so you're fine. Um, so, uh, go ahead and roll me 3d8. I'm sorry. No, this solves you're all in cages immediately. It's not, like, the worst thing in the world. Okay, okay. I try to, like, use Nine. my... Nine? Okay. Nine, yeah. So, uh... I was gonna try to right. use my rodent paws to, like, undo the latch, but... <laughs> I mean that would have been an option, but yeah, that was. You're probably also the in a cage, thing. so you know. Yeah, that was probably um, what was intended, <laughs> in one way or nothing's another. Nothing's intended. You do what you want. This actually worked. I, I'll how about this? I didn't anticipate this option. <laughs> um, so half of it would be five. So, um, Thea and Skylar, you take five, and Rose and Arden take nine. Uh, that hurts. Everyone hears a ringing in their ears. Uh, poor rodents, you have very large ears. And she's like, ah, no. Rose, 
Can people just stop fucking making noise in this place? It just keeps ratcheting up. I'm but... like covering my ears with like middle fingers, <laughs> like no. <laughs> <laughs> but you will note that after you sort of shudder at it and your wings kind of twitch out, uh, the crate kind of cracks at the sound and um, at the like concussive force of it. And um, the pin that was screwed into the crate that was holding you there. Uh, ha- there's a crack down the crate right where that screw is. It's not completely loose right now, but it looks way more likely that you could get it out. The lock is off. The cage is busted. Like <laughs> it's. Cr- it's yeah, no, cr- I think. Bro- I think there is open. nothing but like metal wires. <laughs> <laughs> just a gnarled Silent Hill mash of metal. Yeah. It's just awful. Yeah. Also, that I have to I have to say this because it just popped into my mind, but that poop is everywhere. Oh yeah. I mean, no no no, let's be honest. It's microscopic at this point. It's aerosolized. No one's getting away from it. Um so as That's the whole, worse. Yeah, as the whole pet shop just smells like bird now. Um but uh everything kind of there's a big uh there's like squawking and squeaking and things as, as several of the animals are just running amok now uh, through the shop. Um, none of them seem to have the f- the like consciousness of mind that you all seem to have. Like you all might like sort of assess your surroundings and they're just fucking booking it. Um, uh, Arden, do you have your hand raised? Uh, I didn't, but I do want to look up at this bird and sure. whether he can hear what I say or not, uh-huh. I'm going to be like, Oi, you freaking twat. Watch what you're doing. <laughs> I know. Aren't I amazing? <laughs> I'm going to plop, plop up outside oh, of my cage and God. look and see what the placard said. The, pa- the placard said... Uh, is it broken? <laughs> it is very much broken. But um it says in uh it says in, in a language you you do understand, uh it seems to say thirdrum. I'll put it in the chat. As soon as I get a chance, I am taking your monocle. <laughs> <laughs> that is my um, arcane focus, how could you? <laughs> Oh my, oh my god, god. oh my is. god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I mean, no. You know what? I will say, I will say, okay, so so shatter only affects items that are not worn or carried, which I don't know why that's a distinction. But uh it's non-magical items. Uh and as you kind of like preen a little bit, uh you do note there's a little bit of glowing, and there are runes etched in the glass on the inside of the monocle that are like sort of going back down a little bit as uh I think the ruling for shatter not breaking things that are on like on people's person is so that you can't be like, oh, I use shatter to burst all of their like. I'm gonna break uh, your armor. Yeah, I'm gonna break <laughs> your armor, or I'm gonna burst all of these uh, like firebomb potions. Um, sure, that on that's this guy's fair. Person. That's very um, fair. But at the same time, it doesn't really make sense. Sure. Um, Let's see. Wait, where where's the spelling of my name? Uh, I I put it on the hawk picture. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I I look at that. Look down at the at the rodents and I go. Behold, it is I, Thordum, the great and powerful Lich Hawk. Mm-hmm. Bow. Before my greatness. Mm-hmm. Do a little bow with my wings. You're all pretty <laughs> sure. Bat. You're all pretty sure he's already mis mispronounced his own name. Um, and, <laughs> uh, as he's proudly showing himself. <laughs> Anybody else? I, uh, I like kind of like kind of give a sidelong glance to this uh, other rodent nearby, and I'm just like, as soon as I get a chance, I'm stealing that monocle. Or the hat, whichever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know that it squeaks, but the 
Let me, well, I was going to say, you, uh, Arden, you know, you understand. You you have a good sense of what this this guy's, what this, uh, uh, I'll just make it easier. This Quokka is saying. Um, Quok, if you've ever oh, seen those little rodents guys, I know in exactly that, what you're talking like, wave, so, that's what she so is. Cute. She's that. <laughs> but she has a wizard hat on with stars. Yes. Um, I it looks it. like a, it's a mage. Let's say it's a mage hat. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna assume it's wizard. Um, like just uh, the cone. Yeah, basically. Um, but yeah. I just want to say that a, a wizard's hat is basically just a dunce hat, but with stars on it and a brim. Yeah, <laughs> it's what Sometimes. makes it. Sometimes. It's for when you have to be a dunce in the sun. <laughs> Uh, can I start getting to work on what little bit of the chain is still holding me to this box? Like, oh, just sure. Kind of try to like—it's literally like a screw with a hook on it, and or like with a, with a ring on it, and that's what the chain is run through. So yeah, you can like try to get the screw out. Uh, go ahead and give me a. Ah, go ahead and give me a strength check. Strength check. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine. Uh, that would be a ten. It's not that hard. Uh, it's a screw. Uh, you can sure it takes a second. <laughs> And you kind of like you hold on to it. You like brace your feet against it, <laughs> just, just, and uh, you kind of roll a little bit. But you do get it out. You are still attached to the chain, but um, you are no longer attached to the crate. You are free to roam about the shop. Awesome. Um, I have wings. Yeah. I yes, think you always mentioned you have little leathery wings behind you. I would and like and what start... looks like a scorpion tail. Oh, that's sick. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to see from higher up and see if I can figure out. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't put anybody's pictures. I'm so sorry. Uh, they're so good. Hold on. Um, so there's there's Rose. Um, I put them on stream, but I didn't uh, I didn't put them <laughs> in, the, in the picture or in the. Uh... Oh, my, oh God. my God. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Hold on, I, I have to save this. I have to save this image. <laughs> oh my god. I need it. Hell yeah, look at They're me. Really good. Delightful. Um, no, you're all amazing, and I'm very excited. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you are free. Uh, uh, and like I said, the cages are also broken. Um, uh, Arden, you, um, you hear, uh, as there was an explosion, um, all the sawdust in your cage just got blown to one side of the... Honestly, it probably exploded like confetti, to be fair. It's probably just, like, sort of in the air, snowing sawdust oh. from all the cages. It's, it's combined with the aerosolized poop. Yep, yep. I mean, to be oh. fair, those belong together, so... Uh, maybe it's helping? I don't know. Um, you see that nestled in the corner of your cage, uh were a bunch of little shinies you see um uh you see like a little you see like a little ring you see a a a dice that's very pretty seems to be made of marble um you see uh several buttons um (laughs) does my little vest have any pockets nope oh that's okay all right I'm gonna I'm gonna take with the what little... f- leftover fabric would there. Be? <laughs> I'm gonna take that little ring and I'm just gonna hook it around my arm and keep mm-hmm. it there, nice and nestled. The fanciest purse, <laughs> it's like it's like a little little clutch you're carrying around. Grab the the, the dice. I'll hold the little dice and then mm-hmm. I'll grab one of the shiniest buttons and I'll just. Hold this it. is this is very Templeton from Charlotte's Web, <laughs> with the with the food, like trying <laughs> to carry it all. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so you you've got you're loaded up with your haul, and uh, what do you do? You gonna you gonna like leave with your uh, with your? Yeah. Who I'm knows if they her. were ill gotten, but they're your gains. They're mine. Um, yeah. I'm gonna sure. look for a way down. Sure. Uh, you guys are on the bottom shelf, so you've only got about less than six inches to jump down, so it wouldn't be a big deal to, to hop good, down. Good old hop, all right? Yeah. So then I'm just going to head for uh, the door. Okay. Uh, you uh, 
<laughs> you look f you look at the door um and start walking towards it it's a little bit of ways away um but you're you're moving towards the door um yeah. all right anybody else doing anything while the 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 rat seems to be absconding uh I'm going to I'm going to search my cage. Okay. Um, and see if there's uh, anything as well as like search under my hat. Sure. Um your hat uh says on the inside written in a very what I would describe as a very whimsical broad cursive uh property of lightfoot. I love that. <laughs> um, do I find anything in the cage? You do. You find a um, uh, you find a very uh, you see a a ripped you see ripped up paper, much in the same way that Skylar did. But um, there is also well, Thirdrum. I'm going to start using your names. Um, but you see that the paper that's been ripped up on yours is actually part of a notepad that is still intact with a bunch of the top pages shredded and chewed off. Um, and tucked behind it is a very nice uh, fountain pen. I'm, I'm going to take the pen. Yeah. Um. It's very this big in your pen. hands. <laughs> It's very big in your hands, but uh, but it is a familiar, like, yeah, you feel like it is your pen. Uh, yes, there, Drum. Yeah. Uh, after postulating and posing, and then seeing a small little uh, small little rat uh, friend take off towards the door. I am going to uh, take off uh, and to uh, essentially attempt to get some flying done and dive bomb the mouse. With what, what intent, pray tell? I want to grab it. Cool. I, I, okay. In a in a I would, uh, in I a. I want you to know that hawks dive with a force that's great enough to kill most medium-sized animals. We're gonna um, actually, a, a okay, no, dive. no, you wanna, okay, here's what I'm gonna say. This is perfect. Um, uh, <laughs> Serdrum, uh -huh. you, uh, you see the rat, uh -huh. and your eyes just kind of, like, glaze over in an instinctive, like, kill Bill sirens. Um, <laughs> And you leap off the cage and start diving towards the rat. And in a moment of sudden clarity, I don't want to kill it. Fuck. And you feel yourself suddenly slow as you start very gently gliding towards the rat. You can attempt to... I, I need you to. Friend. We're gonna make it a grapple check. I want uh, contested strength checks, please. Um, <laughs> my new friend. Uh, but uh, you all see as the hawk starts descending, much more controlled. Uh, these like spectral, uh, almost smoky, illusory feathers just kind of fly off his back as he starts falling gently towards the rat. Um, that's mostly flavor for me. That's not like anything written in canon books or anything. Um, what are your strength two and a five? That rat's like, fuck you! <laughs> uh, you get the rat and it just boop, just pops out. Uh, uh, Arden, you're just immediately like, nope! You saw there were several prey animals. You saw there were several predators in that group of animals that went everywhere. You're not... We're not fucking with that. Uh, so yeah, so you you wrestle your way out of the claws of this weirdly gentle hawk. Um, it's mistake. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what would you like to do? I, I scurry faster towards the door. Okay. Uh, Skylar, anything after it runs? No, wait, friend. It is entirely up to you whether you believe him or not. Or 
I just look over my shoulder, <laughs> shake my fist, and keep running. <laughs> jingle jangle of the ring around your arm and <laughs> keep going. Oh um, no, you touched my ring! Oh he's, no, you! He's posh. That's the that's the most offensive gesture you can do to him. <laughs> my word. God. Uh, Rose, what are you doing as all of this is happening? Yeah, um, I took off upwards. I was trying to fly up and sort of make my way because there was, you know, critters, crittering sure. everywhere. Uh, where were you heading for? The door? <laughs> the door. Okay. Um, so you start uh, f not so much flying as, like, gliding. You can make a pretty big leap and start gliding around. You grab onto a bookshelf, you start crawling over, and you jump again, <laughs> you start gliding. Um, so yeah, you don't have much of a problem. Uh, there are several, like, songbirds that are fluttering around in a bit of a panic, uh, as you kind of have to dodge around them. And, um, let's see. Uh, one of them freaks out a little bit, and uh, very much insists uh, that you get out of its face as it's like, <laughs> and so there's like that little flutter thing that little birds do when they're attacking out of defense uh, and starts kind of like pecking at you. Uh, hmm. I think really, really hard about having a lot of distance between me and this bird. <laughs> Okay. Either either I want to be somewhere it is not, or I want it to get as far as fuck away from me as possible. Sure. You um you very instinctively just sort of like no, get away. And uh as you kind of twist around, there's this little gust of wind that and the bird goes. <laughs> oh no. No actual animals were harmed in the making of this game. <laughs> <laughs> fictional violence, animal on animal. Um, um, I, I, I would like to... Um, I would like to do something similar. And, okay. like, I, I'm just gonna wave my pen around and, like, think really hard about going to the door immediately. Gotcha. Um, let's see... Uh, ooh, I might have something for that. Uh, I love just kind of perusing your spell list um, and deciding what you can do. Uh, let's see. So you want to get to the door as like by any means, like whatever's easiest for you to do. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Preferably avoiding hurting other animals. Okay, um, but, you, you're like, I want to be at that door. And there's this poof, and you feel like you're falling. If you ever had, like, a dream where you, like, sort of wake up falling, it's that sensation, uh, and you are at the door. I need you to roll me a, a d20, please. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Why? Because that's the game. <laughs> uh, I need you to give me a wisdom save, please. Uh, and Arden, I also need you to give me a wisdom save as you're continuing oh. to run towards the door and you're probably within 10 feet of this. That's a 10. 10. Uh, I got a natty 20. Now, okay, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> you do not... Or, uh, wisdom save? No, you do not succeed. Uh, the, uh, uh, as... Um, I need you to give me a D8. A 1D8? Yes, please. 8. Or no, I'm so sorry. Give me a D10, not a D8. D10. I misread. Nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, n so, so you feel a tremendous amount of pressure in your head, but nothing seems to happen. That was the luckiest series of rolls you all had there. That was all like, well, <laughs> nothing happens. 
Um, but okay, I think I'm starting to pick up on what I am. Uh-huh. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think there's only there's only one kind of uh, spellcaster that I know of that has to roll after casting a regular spell. You don't know. I mean, you probably do, but you don't yeah. know. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, so Rose, you are free from the um, uh, from the, the little attack bird. Um, uh, Arden, you are free from the big attack bird. Uh, <laughs> Skylar, you are the big attack bird, and you're sad. Uh, and Thea, you are poof. You teleported right to the door. I will say you for note that there are other creatures kind of scurrying and, and freaking out around you. There's like snakes that are going under the table. There's uh, um, the little fluttering birds are all kind of in the rafters now. Uh, there is at least one uh, actual duck that uh, is just kind of very confused and biting at anything that gets near it. There's some ferrets that that. God damn it. There's some ferrets that weasel their way under a dresser. I didn't mean it. I just happened. I am so sorry. Fucking idioms. Uh, so <laughs> you call um, an idiot. Oh my God. <laughs> call it an idiom. Uh, so, um, but you do note that there are three other creatures that all seem to be fixated on. Well, Skylar's doesn't really count. Uh, Third room doesn't count, but the other two seem to be genuinely heading for the door. Same as you. Like, they're the only ones that seem to be actively heading for the door. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, throw up my hands, like, wait! And I'm just an adorable little, okay. <laughs> this adorable little road to just be like, wait! Stop! <laughs> you just have perpetual face of that little, that little husky dog that told a bad joke. <laughs> it's just like that the whole time. Um... Oh my God, that's too good. That's too good of an impression. <laughs> um, I have an, okay. I have a very expressive face. <laughs> so, uh, Rose, you're coming up from above, and Arden, you're scurrying on the ground, same as the rodent or as the quokka, and uh, uh, you see, you see her stop you, or try to stop you. You gonna juke, or are you gonna actually stop? gonna like slow down and give a questionable look but then just kind of like scoot around and go towards the door again to see okay. if i can squeeze my way out through a crack or something sure i'm gonna like uh, can i can i like reach and grab the back of their vest okay that's another grapple check so i need contested strength checks again and skylar i want you to think about what you're doing now that your friend has abandoned you <laughs> Your new best friend. I still have you. prey. Ten. <laughs> Ten. Seventeen. Seventeen. You get out okay. again. Like, no. <laughs> uh, you get smacked by a tail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or uh, sorry, Lightfoot. Uh, uh, what are you doing, Third Room? I am listening with, with intent for any mechanical or steam <laughs> clockwork like you have it sound. Oh, <laughs> give me a perception check. Absolutely. Oh no. Oh my god. Is there like a rivalry between hawks and ducks that I don't know about? I don't know. There is no. Okay. Uh that is a 19. 19. We need a we we need a t-shirt that has the hawk with the monocle and just says peace was never an option. <laughs> um, One casting one. shatter. Casting shatter. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, um, it is a little noisy in here, but with that roll, um, you hear a little bit of a putter, like a sputter of like an exhaust or something, <laughs> like a little clockwork click. Uh, of something broken uh, and you hear it sort of tw well, it's behind the it's a very simple shop square uh, there were cages on, th on three sides there's windows on the front and a window door and then on the left side there's a, dr there's a counter 
to a back room and you hear it behind the counter. Uh, walk over to the side of the counter, not showing myself yet, but essentially head peeks past the little part where it would see me and I'm just going to look. Give me a stealth <laughs> check. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, third room stealth with eleven. That's a fourteen. Not bad. Um, I, I actually, your perception was a what? My perception was with modifier. Was if it's plus two. Two. It is a plus two. Uh, it was twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, you definitely hear the the clinking. Um, yeah. and yeah, your uh, this duck does not. This duck is literally a, a wind-up toy. It's very complicated, but it probably doesn't have much by the way of like, you know how you hear your voice in your own head, mm -hmm. like with echoing? It's that, but with clockwork, it probably can't hear shit. Uh, so <laughs> no, it does not notice, especially since it's a little busted. Uh, you see it like kind of doing what a bird would do, like preening its, its feathers, but it looks like it's just trying to like pull plates back together. As it got a little busted. Uh, are you just going to stalk it for a while? Or are you going to do anything? Uh, for a moment. I'm, I'm watching from a distance. Okay. Are you are you waiting for some sort of opening? Or, or deciding what to do with it? Uh, deciding what to do. Okay. Um, Alright, so Arden, you're going to try to get under the door. Uh, give me a... Give me an investigation check. Go ahead and uh, give me a d20. Packed, hold on. Um, nine. Nine. That's a nine total. Uh, you, uh, you kind of start scooting along the edges, all the while trying to balance all the stuff you're carrying. Um, and it, it looks like a pretty substantial door it doesn't look like it's busted anywhere it's very it's very well sealed around the edge uh it's it's um it is carved in a way that is uh very <laughs> flush with the wall so you don't seem to be able to find a way to open it or to to sneak in it out of frustration i kick it with my little foot oh no Zach um roll. Pod. No, I, I could sense the impotent rage there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, let me see. Do, 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 do. I, I pulled up pictures of Quokas on on my phone, so it's now every it. time I look down, it's, you're welcome. I'm just uh, just flooded with adorable images. You are very welcome. Uh, let's see. You. Hmm. Oh, perfect. Um, you you attack the door, me, uh, and you hear a sudden skittering from behind you, Arden. Uh, and the uh, uh, Lightfoot, you see this. From the cracks and crevices around the shop, uh, you see a bunch of rats all sort of start converging on the door. Um, and they all look like normal rats. They do not look like they don't have mohawks or clothes or anything. Were they don't these look like rats here before? Not not in cages. Uh, and they all start I'm... swarming the door and just like a mix of like just boom, 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 like hitting the door but some of them are actually trying to like scrape and and chew at it and stuff um and one of the uh um and you 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 get a sense of what they're all squeaking and stuff and they're just like all basically going yeah you. I'm trying to attack the door. Did you just did you just cast like summon woodland creatures or something? 
by kicking a door? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a million rat familiars? <laughs> Maybe. Honestly, that would be the most overpowered thing. I guess the next thing I would do would maybe to like communicate to start like chewing a hole through the door. Sorry, I just looked over at the chat and saw the gifts. God. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna close uh, that. You um uh you you try to sort of like and uh <laughs> basically you get a yeah. Yeah, let's do it! And they all just start trying to chew at the door. Uh, so you see these rats. Uh, let me see if there's an indication of how many there are. I don't think. No, it does not. Uh, it does not indicate how many there are. Um, so yeah, the they they sort of all swarm around the the door and they start chewing um, at the door. Uh, anybody else doing anything? You, I assume the goal here is to try to get out. Can I try to just burst through the door? Sure, give me a strength check. Oh, well, that fell. That die is gone forever now. Okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. Uh... Like very Bugs Bunny, like wind up, <laughs> try to go through, bonk, and you smack into the glass, and it's like you're you're wait, dazed wait. for a second. Would the glass be gone from shatter? Uh, within sixty feet. Oh, um, that's valid. Uh, no, because it was not non magical. Um, Good to but know. you smack into the it's like and just <laughs> you guys got like smush faced imp on the window. There's a little face print. <laughs> Great. Um and when you hit uh you um there is a a almost a dust cloud that sort of <laughs> Like kind of gives off from you, little red motes of dust kind of come off, and um, it looks like you actually, you actually have like slightly. It's not br your skin's not bright red like it looks like. It looks like you're actually coated in little, little like smears of red dust. You have more. Um, uh, your skin's a little, a little closer to like greenish brown um Ooh. but there is red uh coating you and that's what's currently flying in a little cloud around you when you smacked into the door um Great. i need uh let's see arden i need you to give me a con save as this dust just kind of floats down that's a six. Seven. That's not gonna work. Um, Rose, give me a give me a D4. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys don't know what you can do, it's fine. It's a three. Uh you take three necrotic damage. <laughs> um necrotic. as you like okay. breathe it in and it's like <laughs> it's like this dust just doesn't feel good in your little rat lungs. Ow. Hello, raspberry. My fist. I just love this rat. <laughs> With your mohawk and your vest, I really wish you had little fingerless gloves. Um, it would have been great. Uh, just uh, this very, very grumpy rat. Oh, uh, speaking of, um, the rats, um when when you're like and uh and you take that damage uh all look up oh, at no. rose <laughs> and their eyes go uh go a little bit red 
and they all start glowing a little bit red and they stop looking like rats for a second as they all start floating up towards Rose and they start swarming you. Uh, <laughs> like, a, like, like angry bees. <laughs> um, um, you take, I... <laughs> you take, uh, you take two piercing damage from the swarm as they're just like, <laughs> uh, very angrily attacking you. Great. Uh, and the, and the imp is wearied. <laughs> um, the imp has been bloodied, finally. Uh, the Shatter did it. This is the most damage dealt in any of the games, and it's all uh, PvP. It's all friendly fire. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. It happens to be the one where you're all playing cute little animals. Um, Skylar, or Thurdra, yes. have you yes. decided what you're doing I'm... to the two or with the dog? Am I the, wait, yeah. am I the only person that hasn't dealt anybody else damage yet? Correct. And I'm 90% sure I'm a wild mage. That's impressive. That's not how that's supposed to go. Yeah, that's impressive, right? <laughs> Listen, uh, somebody saved, and then you rolled fine for nothing to happen. So everything was fine. <laughs> what would you like to do, Thurgrim? I'm going to round the corner, wings out spread, and I'm going to say... So worried. You ducked around, now you're going to find out. Do you feel... <laughs> Fear, mechanical beast. Oh my and I'm just going to menacingly just start walking towards this duck. I, I need to know how long did you have that line cooking? Oh, A while. God. I want to know how much psychic damage we all just took. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> the duck just goes and uh starts trying to waddle away from you, but give me an intimidation check. Nat 20. 23. Um, I mean, 20. valid. This <laughs> poor duck has been nothing but just Oh, I can't quite literally, read. quite literally shat upon since the beginning of this game. Uh, and it sees you, it gives out that really angry, not angry, but startled quack and starts like it It was moving like this. Now it's as it's trying to get away and it uh, it hits a um, it starts shaking a basket that's on the ground to try to tip it over and um, yeah, it, it tips the basket over and uh, several objects start falling out of the basket, including a very beautiful lantern that looks like a birdcage, but has uh, like stained glass around it, basically. Uh, and it rolls out of the uh, out of the basket. And I need you to give me a, a quick wisdom save, Thurdrum. Ah, uh, the dice giveth and the dice taketh. Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Uh, the duck, uh, the, the basket falls over, the bottle rolls out, the duck, like, smacks the bottle and it, or the bottle, not the bottle, the, uh, the lantern, it rolls towards you and, um, you disappear. You uh, just got Pokeballed. And, uh, you are dwarfed by this large palatial room covered in beautiful stained glass with uh, floor to ceiling windows. It's domed at the top, uh, beautiful panes of silver around the stained glass. And there are just velvet cushions everywhere. But you're still a hawk. So, tiny bird in a big space. And there's a deep subwoofer of t -t 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 outside. <laughs> 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 
what is happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great question. I'm, I I am going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and figure out my surroundings. Like I'm going to try and figure out mentally what is what has just happened. What has occurred? You've been uh, give me an Arcana check. <laughs> You've been Pokeballed. I mean, yeah. If he gets a low roll, that's what he's getting. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Uh, that's a fourteen. Uh, you feel like you have been teleported. Uh, or you feel like you have teleported. Maybe that you weren't. It's not that you were teleported. It's that you teleported. Um. Uh, this doesn't feel. This isn't a scary place. In fact, it kind of like fills you with this like, ah, oh, that's better. Wait, what? And then you're like confused about where you are. Um, but the impulse initially was that this was a very comfortable place. Um, you see a uh, oh, so so in the room you see a bunch of really soft cushions, and you see a very elaborate series of um, like branches that have sort of been artificially propped up to go very high up in the room. Uh, it's like, um, you also have this sort of gut instinct to want to go climb on that stuff. <laughs> I, I, I want to go do that. I'm, yeah, you fly I'm, up and, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's pretty comfy. It's a weird, it's a weird sort of split feeling of like the room is a comfortable homey place, but then these branches are also the very comfortable homey place. It, it, it almost feels a little bit like you're of two minds about it. Uh, the duck back in the shop is just like at the lantern and starts walking away. <laughs> um. With the 14, uh, like I said, the distinction between being teleported and you teleported feels a little like an agency question. It feels like you did it as an impulse to be somewhere safe where you didn't want to be in the shop anymore, um, as opposed to you were placed somewhere. So you, you, you might be able to choose to go back to the shop. Yeah, I'm just going to enjoy my surroundings for a moment. Try and get get rid of that. I, I was feeling a lot of negative emotions. Maybe now you I can just, wanted you know... to kill a see. duck? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe <laughs> you can just, like, let that go. Kill a, kill yeah, a yeah. harmless <laughs> clockwork duck. Uh-huh. Just like, doing his kind job. Kind of talked back Jeez. mildly to you once. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take a take a small siesta in here and just kind of re rearrange my uh, rearrange my emotions. Okay, so you take your take your breath. Uh, Rose, you're being attacked by red angry rat ghosts. You're not quite sure what's going on. Um, yeah. They just make a quick swarm and then they sort of float back towards the rat on the ground uh, and they surround you and sort of like ebb and flow around you like a cloud of little motes of light. Uh, and uh, they're just kind of vibing. They seem like they're they're just waiting because they're they want to be next to you. Okay. Um, I'm assuming we didn't get much damage on the door. Of... Um, they they did a little bit. Let's see. Um, let's <coughs> see. Hold on. Hmm. Never thought I would de uh search the <laughs> HP of a door, but <laughs> that's what we got. Hey, um, D and D is all about looking up the HP of things that you did not expect to have to look up HP for. Uh, yeah. Let's. Sure. Um, they seem like they have, um, uh, they seem like they have ni nibbled a few centimeters along the bottom of the door. Yeah, uh, they could probably keep going, but it might take a little while. Uh, I guess. 
can I glance around? Do I see any like other like mouse holes or anything that I could traverse through? Uh, give me a perception check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, that is a twenty-one. Very nice. Um, you take a look and uh are scanning the room. Uh, let's see. Um, glancing. Uh, there's a lot of shadowy corners and crevices behind shelves and books and bookcases. Um, you start, uh, it's going to take a little bit to survey the whole room. Um, but you, um, uh, you kind of, dodge past uh the the quokka with the with the hat and uh you get you actually can climb up a little bit uh you just sort of like naturally start slowly taking yourself up higher um and you get up on a a little shelf near the front door and get a better view of everything um you see that um you're sort of like listening and, and you're using all you're like paying super close attention to the whole area and you hear the little tick 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 of the duck behind the counter you can kind of see him from up here um and you see this like glowing cylinder that's rolling around out in the back you don't know what that's <laughs> about um but you do see up in the back room there is an open window it's towards the top of the room, though. Okay. So, would that be something I would have to, like, climb up there, or...? Yeah, it's pretty... It, there's nothing really near it. It's just, like, a sheer wall face to get up to this little... It almost looks like a, um... Kind of looks like one of those, uh, like, basement access windows that would have a little, like... It's, like, it leans out to open... Hmm. Um, and so it's like a little bit, or I guess leans out from the top. So there's like a little angle you could slip out. Probably about six, seven feet up. Okay. Considerably taller than you. Right, right. Um, I guess I'll make that my new goal. Okay. Um, maybe with the help of my weird ghost rat friends. Maybe they can help me climb up it, or if they're floating, maybe they can help me float up there. I don't know. Okay. We'll try multiple um, things. So, uh, as they're, like, going, can I just, like, I'm just going to tap them on the shoulder, point up at the rats, and be like, did you do that in, like, squeaks? <laughs> so, like, a, so, holy shit! How? <laughs> yeah. How? <laughs> what? They, right now, they just look like little motes of light. They're not even, they're like amorphous right now. They don't even look like rats. I feel like that's moment. creepier, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they're not red anymore. They start going into more of a neutral, light, greenish-blue color. Because oh. they're just kind of sort of twisting and floating okay. around. Um, let's see. Um... Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um you ta uh you want to ask the swarm or see if the swarm can help you? Yeah. Okay. Uh you uh you sort of think out to them or squeak out to them and uh, they seem to immediately understand what you want. Um and they swarm around you uh and you feel yourself being lifted a little bit. Uh, and you are taken, uh, you're only lifted a few centimeters off the ground, but they take you straight across from the bookshelf five feet forward to the next countertop. Um, and then they're just kind of still crawl, like kind of swirling around you as they do that. Um, you're not sure they can take you vertical, but they can take you horizontal. Okay. Thing. Okay. Um. 
Well, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. Rose, I you guess... say, damn it, someone else can fly. <laughs> now you're not special. <laughs> I guess I'll just, have, you know, continue on my way. We have three people who can fly in one way or another. <laughs> hey, the I hawk's missing. The hawk's <laughs> missing. Who, who cares about that yeah. guy? <laughs> yeah, he no also show. exploded us. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> I got you out. It's true. It's, I mean, yeah, in in the grand scheme like of things, toss- he is okay. the reason you're walking around. If you toss a grenade into the middle of a prison, I you can't really open save the couple yeah. cells. You opened the cells, but did you really free anybody? Oh my god. Oh. So, uh, what is everybody doing as the... Uh, as the rat is inching towards the uh, towards the back room, you don't necessarily know what she's trying to do, but uh... how you doing, uh, third room? You enjoying your uh, like you're in that room and there's just kind of like music playing in the I background just, as we cut. I to just there. imagined like this hawk do, do, like do, do, sitting do, do, properly do, do, on his butt with like in like the ohm. You find like a tea like a cup of tea. You're just like <laughs> if, if uh standing on one foot with one claw essentially doing this. Uh <laughs> amazing with no beard to speak yeah, of. Yeah, no 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 beard. Uh I get a sudden idea. Mm-hmm. Denizen of this domain, of this den, if you are with me, if anyone is with me, I call upon you. I am Thirdrum, Thirdam, Thirdrum. The great and magnificent, and I call upon your aid. Give me a charisma check. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, 15. 15, uh, it's an 18, okay. Yeah. You wait in the room, and there is an echo in the space as a voice fills this, uh, well, for, for, for all intents and purposes, this room. Hmm. Indeed. (laughs) How, how do I escape from here? Okay, poop time. <laughs> I, I do a little. Sh- I, I do a little shit. I, the the <laughs> indeed into poop time is a, the two funniest responses <laughs> to hearing like. The Demon voice of an elder things. god. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, like, fucking, I'm fucking dead. Hold on. Like, you, you hear Hold the on, voice of something beyond all comprehension, oh, and you're just like, you don't know okay. shit right now. Is he the different ways for his mouth that's from the fourth seat in Rome? I'm going to con- 
I'm going to concentrate as hard as I can to comprehend what this voice is saying, this echo. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Ooh. Do no. you mean? Okay, actually, no. Let me let me ask you to clarify. Do you mean yes. literally you can't hear the words, or you're trying to understand what it's implying? What it is implying. Okay. All right. Fine. Give me an Arcana check, then you can reroll. Okay. It. Yeah. Uh, that is an 11. Okay, a 15. Mm hmm Little friend. I mean, you are little. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't know anything about yourself. Um, you sort of assumed that this is what you were. Um... But he says to take your form, to take its form. Maybe you're not a hawk. Or you're not supposed to be. This room does seem really big for you. It does. There's not even like a mountain. I mean, if you're going to go big, at least be outside. <laughs> Why would you have another cage? That's dumb. But this still feels like your place, not just, not just the fake tree in the corner. The whole space feels like it's yours. Or theirs, maybe collectively both of yours. Maybe you're borrowing it. <laughs> you're subleasing. Denizen of this den. Is my name my own? Am I Thirdrum? Can I do another? Can I do another check? Uh, twelve this time. You um. Uh, so it's an arcana 12 is a 16 okay um you there is a not a not a shudder as he says that but uh a sort of crystallizing of what that word means promised and and your vision almost, your vision almost blurs a little bit at the thought as as you try to focus on the idea of of what this this being is implying and and trying to get across to you, and and you feel like you feel like you're back in the cage, you feel you feel confined, like you as your person are in a smaller space than you're supposed to be. And it doesn't feel like it's the room that's making you feel that way. It feels like you are, your physicality is in a smaller space than it should be. And there is a, a bit of sort of a moment where you look, you look at your clawed feet and there are, uh, again, almost like your vision blurs a little bit between seeing them and not seeing them, but there are these like spectral, there's this like spectral chain around your foot. 
and it kind of wraps around you and sort of kind of follow it and it it drifts off into into nothing just like kind of like in in your space like it's supposed to connect you to something but it's not there promised seems to imply that you are somehow magically connected to this being and it's not correcting you when you say it is the denizen of this space of this realm um it seems to have some level of i mean i dare the word affection but it seems to have some element of um investment in you uh your um and you know you have magic it's about the most connective tissue you've got right now from that but it does seem like it's he's taking some sort of ownership of you or some sort of responsibility for you with the way he's talking Indeed. Thank you. This this chat has been enlightening, and I will do my best to do my best to fix this. I I will be leaving now, and with a thought in my head that I'm going to escape this room, I am going to walk away from the little shit that I did. And I am going to continue to pretend that I can understand you. Just mm -hmm. walks off. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so, yeah, you, uh... Oh, oh, creepy! And, uh, you... That effect is so cool. Thank you. It's yeah, called. No, you need to. You need to tell me how to do that. It's called back mask. It's a. It's a. Uh, it's a virtual uh, um, audio effect. Um, it's very cool. I'll. I'll share it. Uh, you. Um, you think about it, and you feel the room sort of fill with air and cloud, and it. It's this combination of. Uh, feeling very at peace in this sort of airy space. And also there's that little like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be, not in a cage, but in the clouds. And then you feel yourself kind of fall a little bit and you are, you kind of stumble and you kind of bump the lantern as you are back in the back room. Uh, Arden, you're being floated in towards the countertop, and as you float to the counter where, like, the register would be for this shop, you see the hawk appear in a puff of swirling clouds in front and below you, behind the countertop, uh, from what seemed to be this lantern. There was, like, a, a plume of smoke, very I Dream of Genie, and uh, you poof out uh, and you see the hawk with his top hat and monocle kind of stumbles a little bit but the <clears throat> nobody saw that <clears throat> except you did um, and uh, yeah uh, before we continue that though real quick uh, Rose and uh, Littlefoot uh, when you see the rat move do you want to follow or are you going to try I'll something else I'll follow okay same um, way you got there last time, or you want to walk? I want to see if there's any different way that I can travel. Okay, so not so much I want to blink and be there, but you want to figure out if you can do something else. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, what other ways can I go somewhere? Can I be somewhere closer to where I want to be? Um, and... Like, oh, I swear okay. to God, if wings sprout out of my back again. Uh, you feel yourself starting to shift forward. You see all the, you see the shelf in front of you getting closer and lower. And you're like, oh, I am flying. Uh, Rose, you see the quokka getting fucking huge. 
um, as it just grows into like a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man style, like uh, large, uh, I'm gonna say a medium, no, you're small right now. No, you're, maybe you're tiny actually. So you become a medium sized yeah. creature. You're the size of a fucking brown bear or a black bear. And you're like, just, yeah, you're a big ass quokka. I can fly. And then I you bump into up. the counter and you look down, you realize you're just very big. No, no, I still say I can fly out loud.